So things look bad Oh uh, no, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. I'm already crying, but I'm gonna cry. You can't serenade me with them pipes, bro. Good god dang greetings gremlins. How the hell are ya? It is me, Neveable, here with another reaction night. Today, we're here with Has Been Hotel, season one, episode four, Masquerade. I hope you're as excited as I am because I have just rolled through the second and third episode and I am so, so hyped to keep going. We learned that Carmilla was the one that killed, slain, decapitated the terrifyingly brilliant exorcist angel. Now we're trying to figure out what the heck is going on because Alistar figured that out and Frank knows and Frank is a silly little egg that doesn't know he's not supposed to say things except he totally does because he'll go, oh yeah, and then that one lady killed an angel, uh, but I wasn't supposed to tell you that. And then he gets dismissed because he's a silly little egghead. So let's see what else happens in the series, shall we? Now it's 18 plus. Interesting. It said 16 plus before. I understand why it said 18 plus. Um, a general PSA, this episode contains scenes that depict sexual assault. Viewer discretion is advised. An Amazon series, give me the intro. Bum, 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 bum. I appreciate that the intro is like short. It's like fun and jazzy, but it doesn't take up too much of our time. Oh, oh my. Oh, hi, Angel. Oh, he's 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 bondaged. That's not ideal. Porn actor gangster? Uh oh. I feel like that might have been a tiny bit of a spoiler. It's hilarious. You think I tell you anything? That was kind of. I'll just have to fuck the information out of you. Oh. Do your worst, daddy. Damn. Oh, there he goes. Not the mating press. I adore the different reactions that the cast is having to this video. Like, <laughs> Serpentious, disturbed. Charlie, disgusted. Vaggy, bored and over it. And then there's Nifty, and she's just kicking her little feet. She's so excited about it. And it's so silly. Want me a sex, sex, sex Not a sex, sex reward. Aww. Okay, enough of that. Angel, what the fuck? What? You Charlie is so it. small and tiny and precious. And I'm telling you that it scored me a win over that bitch Tiffany Titfucker. Yeah, you fuck know, Tiffany Titfucker. Interrogations here. Uh, All right. He knows <laughs> secrets or how to get secrets out of people. Do you really gonna sit there and act like these scripts ain't hot garbage? <gasps> fuck you. Did You're just the actor, bro. I feel like I can understand Angel wanting to defend his performance, but like, come on, man, you didn't write the script. There's even a point in the trailer where Angel's ragging on one of the scripts that Val gives him. So like, don't be defensive, baby. It's okay. Oh, I love that Nifty's into it. That's fair. That one is an insecure buffoon whose lonely ass watches you idiot. No! Oh! Like a bleeding heart who wants to solve everybody else's problems except her own. That's fair. No! <laughs> <laughs> what? Me? Everything because she hates herself. And Damn, really stop reading yeah. people. You don't even want to know what her deal is. That's fair. I'm not sure how much of the cast's lives before hell is canonically exposed or revealed or whatever. So far, we don't really know anything, but I do know stuff from like secondhand information, like from panels or art refs or whatever. I'm feeling like Nifty is is truly awful. <laughs> Like, I I think that there's headcanon, or it might be confirmed, I don't know, that she was a stalker and, like, killed a man that she was in love slash obsessed with before she died, and that's why she ended up in hell. And, like, I can totally, I can totally see that. To be honest, she's a little freak. Oh, you weren't kidding. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't call him kidding. And you. Don't get me started. I see right through you and all this bullshit. Oh, oh man. Oh, me? Frank? Wow. Never. No idea. 
Guess that's oh right damn. Actor, dumbass. I wasn't ready for the the eye split dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> Husk is out here eating these bitches up. No lie. Like <laughs> Bartenders know so much about you, bro. The same way you shouldn't piss off a hairstylist because they have your hair, you shouldn't piss off a bartender because they know way more about you than you think they do. And? And? Hello? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here. No, no, I just... Uh, oh, no. no I, I'm not. But... Oh, uh, uh, the vibe change of his demeanor. Right well, uh, looks like Val needs me for an uh, emergency shoot. Emergency you shoot. Know what? Fuck you. I don't give a shit what some drunk ass bartender thinks of me. So why don't you just crawl back to whatever cave you came from, porn critic? Angel, you Fair. Porn isn't designed to be crazy storytelling. Porn is designed to get a job done. It's my job. Low key, that is so true though. I feel like Charlie isn't being particularly understanding of real world issues like having a job. That could just be her privilege of being a princess and never really having to have had a real job before. But it's a little itsy bitsy tiny little bit annoying that she's trying to like actively keep Angel from going to do his literal fucking job everything but unless you can fix my boss there's nothing you can do oh that sounds like a challenge to her bro the little feet kicks well i mean you're the princess of hell so so you don't really use the power that comes with that which i love about you but maybe you can i don't know command a little more authority but that's very true it's not mean exactly it's uh, aggressive kindness. Aggressive kindness? I could be so aggressively kind to Angel. Oh boss man. I Is this where she figures out what An Angel has done to him? Whatever gets you there, babe. Bless. Ah, oh, uh, it's from the trailer. Do you really expect me to memorize So many more papers in his hand in the second scene. Travis! I know that guy. So, Travis is one of those reoccurring background characters that I literally always notice. Do you guys have a background character like that? Let me know down in the comments. I'm curious. Oh no! So many His little butt! And only one me. His little I butt! I guess I'll have to do all of you. Oh man. I'm dead. Oh man. Oh no, she she just walked on. Oh, I love her. What in the ever loving fuck are you doing here? That is such a valid concern. Oh no. Angel has no or not Angel. Charlie has no idea what she's gonna do. ready for that <laughs> oh my gosh i know that charlie has like his best interests at heart but she does not know how to read a room i appreciate so much that she wants to help angel but she has to be able to see that she's flustering him making him uncomfortable and even making him feel scared val can't do much of anything to charlie without negative repercussion but he sure as fuck can do some shit to angel as punishment for what's going on. Because I doubt that Val would be okay with this. And if he is, it's gonna be in the most maliciously compliant way ever. Okay, and we will talk about this, I promise, but first you gotta go. Ah, oh interested. no. Oh, shit. Welcome to my humble sex dungeon. Oh man. For such a... Ew. Mm. <laughs> Whispered no thank you. you. Oh, hell no. Fuck no. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have come to aggressively kindly speak with you about Angel. Later, of course. I wouldn't want to stand in the way of your work. Oh, man. Well, then, oh, no. Charlie. And enjoy the show. 
Well, let's take this shit from the top. <laughs> Action! Brother, the secondhand embarrassment that I'm getting from this right now is crazy. Charlie has been explicitly displayed to be an innocent, gentle person, and to see her on the set of a literal prano is ridiculous. I just... <sighs> It makes me feel some type of way, and that is not a positive thing. Oh, wow, Mr. Robert. I'm oh, no. Sure you don't hurt me with those big guns of yours. Don't move, you spicy little... Ah, uh, oh, the boom mic. Or else I will. Cut! What the fuck is going on with this? Oh, I'm sorry. Were we too loud? I was just telling him about the Hasman Hotel. Not at all, princess. Oh, man. The snarl. The snarl. You know, this scene feels awfully violent. If you want help with the script, maybe I can pitch some scenarios that are more... Oh, Charlie. Um, uh, okay, that's on fire. That's on fire. That's on fire. Oh, Charlie. Oh, it hurts. Okay, one of my biggest pet peeves is when characters are used just like as a, a way to propel problems in this way. Like, I appreciate that she actually had a reason for being here because sometimes characters will just like cause problems to cause problems because the script needs drama. But like, I d uh, it's like it, it's it's giving me so much secondhand embarrassment is the only way I can explain it like I'm cringing internally right now for this which I'm sure is the goal but it still just makes me so uncomfortable and a little angry for Angel Dust because I know that he's gonna get the sharp end of the stick because of this oh man ooh wings pretty blonde head about it he just called her stupid angel can i see you in his nipples for a moment? that man's areolas are peeking oh no i didn't know you really think you can have lucifer's little bitch by your battles for you oh angel you bring her here to protect you to fuck me? You think she can get Aww. you backwards? No, no, that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, no. Uh, this is really, really difficult to watch. I know that it's important to show this side of what Angel Dust goes through, but I feel my heart shriveling in my chest as I watch this. It is so gut wrenching to see our guy who's usually so confident and happy be put into this weak, vulnerable position. It's difficult for me to even put into words the kind of emotions that I'm feeling at the moment. So I'll take this as an opportunity to say that if you are going through something like this, even if you're not a actor of the erotic variety, if it's just the way that your partner or somebody in your life treats you and it's similar or akin to this in any way, there are ways for you to get help. I'm going to put a hotline number in the description for anybody that needs it. You can't do anything. Not the chain. You forgotten that. Anthony. I forget his name is Anthony sometimes. When I say you are fucking 20 guys before lunch, you say. Gets involved in everything. I'll, I'll tell her to leave. I just don't know her that I have killed bitches for less than this attitude you're giving me. He's not even giving you attitude, you shithead. You're gonna go get rid of her and then filming all night. Oh, I gotta hit this man. I hate him so much. And then the camera in the background, because you know that Vox is just watching this getting off on it too. And the bittersweetness of like, hearts being everywhere even in the smoke that's arising from his fucking i don't want to call it a cigarette because that's not what it is but 
I don't know what you smoke that has red smoke, you know? But I cannot deny that the sound design that they have applied to his voice right now is really, really well done, and it makes him extremely intimidating. Yeah. This episode is not for the weak of heart. Ew, the like growl. Alright, get your asses back on set and we are taking this from the top. What makes you think you can treat him like Hell that? yeah. Just stop. Angel, what are you talking about? Charlie, leave. But, but I didn't want you to come here. I already asked you to leave and you didn't listen. You made things worse. I just wanted to help you. Well, you ain't. You actually want to help me? Get the fuck out of here! Right now! And let me finish my work! I... I, I didn't... Mean to. I, I'm... I'm so sorry! I appreciate so much that she wants to help, but... God... Dude, somebody somebody needs to punch this moth in the face because uh, it's so painful to see Anthony, a character that we know has the potential to be very gentle and loving and fun and happy, be so aggressive and angry towards Charlie, a character that we know has the best intentions at heart even when her intentions aren't well executed, and just... The whole time, Valentino looking like a smug motherfucker in the background. Oh, I can't. I can't right now. Ah! Uh, oh, it's happening! It's the song! And the black eye is gone because of makeup. Mmm. This is so painful, dude. I can only blame myself. Cause I know you're poison, you're feeding me poison. Why do they have to give me such a banger song while I'm getting my heart broken? Man, and then the design, like the outfit designs are really good, but it's all just so bittersweet because of the context of what's going on. I'm gonna try to appreciate like the design work for what it is, even though like I have this pit in my stomach at the moment. The fact that they gave Angel this like very fluffy, frilly, like almost dress-like situation with what he's wearing right now, and it's serving like spider abdomen. I really appreciate that as a design point. Oh man. Oh man. Those characters are cute at least. Man. Wait, but that's so fucked up that they have this joke just in the middle of this really heart-wrenching song. But the clapperboard having 69420666613 on it, I gotta at least show some appreciation for that, even if it's just a glimmer of comedic relief in all of this. Valo is busting in like as the, the last person to be able to treat Angel this way and like fuck him, so messed up. Aww. Oh, it's the clip! Oh, I was also right about the background dancers. God. I hate how he's so good at acting that he's able to make it seem like he's actually in the moment and enjoying himself and that confident, but at the end of the day, he really is just chained up by Val. It's so fucking heart-wrenching, dude. It's so fucking heart-wrenching. Ugh, the voice acting in that whole song is so good. I need a drink. The hardest you can make. Fair. You look like shit. Not possible. 
Oh, not the stuffing it down. We interrupt this program to bring you my bullshit. You gremlins know how much I love you and appreciate your support, but what if you wanted to do more and receive perks for it? Well, now you can by becoming a gremster. For the low cost of your soul, $4.99 per month, you can help support the channel and get access to fun stuff like custom emotes and loyalty badges designed by yours truly, member-only photo and status updates, got them seeky secrets, additional weight on upcoming RNs. If you have something that you really, really want me to watch or you want to take part of the gremster only polls that I have to sift through some of these options, then make sure to click that join button. In addition to all that, you also get member shout outs and priority replies to comments. Oh, and of course, don't forget to check out the merch link in the description below to see all of the wonderful designs from mugs to sweaters to stickers to pillowcases. I got it all for y'all and it's all drawn and arranged by me so you'll be supporting the artist directly. Thank you. And now back to your regularly scheduled ritual. Excuse me. Didn't realize this was a drink of the forget kind of night. Oh, I forgot. You're the wise old bartender who's seen it all. True. Get the fuck over yourself and pour me a real drink. Look. Damn, you ain't gotta you spill it though. I'm not gonna find the solution at the bottom of a bottle. I should know. I've been looking there a long time. No. Oh, Aw, husk. Where should I look? Huh? In your bedroom, maybe. Under the covers. Maybe we can Angel. Don't even start. Honestly, I think that the thing that makes Angel like Husk the most is the fact that he keeps rejecting him. Because I imagine that in most situations where Angel would be like borderline throwing himself at somebody in this way, they would be so obsessed with like the side of him that they see in porno that they would yes, no hesitation and try to treat him that same way. But because Husk is actually like rejecting him and showing him later, I imagine that gentleness that he lacks in his life, that it would make Angel more comfortable and just even more likely to act this way around him, which seems very convoluted. It could almost be seen as like a challenge for Angel to see how hard he can push Husk to try and get him to sleep with him but because he keeps saying no he's like I like talking to you because you're not actually trying to fuck my brains out and that's literally my life all the fucking time I just want somebody to hug Angel I want to hug Angel can I give him a hug I want to hug this guy he deserves it or Anthony I also wonder if his contract with Val has an expiration date I doubt it I'm sure it's some shit like until your debt is paid or something like that something that is very obtuse and easy to extend and not something that's a definitive deadline Come on. I bet I can make those wings yikes who the growl it's never gonna work on me so all you're doing is making an ass out of yourself with this fake bullshit Call me fake one more time, Ooh. his little dots actually looked like eyes oh you tall motherfucker Oh, Angel. To have angel dust come on to them. Fuck you. Have fun being a lonely piece of shit. Oh, Damn, why'd you have to push Vaggy for? Husk, what did you do? Made him a drink. Oh, no. <laughs> Husk, what the hell? It's just Angel. He'll be fine. Let this be a general PSA that if you have a friend that is always fine, to still check up on them because sometimes, although this might be surprising to believe, they're not always fine and they do actually need support. They're just too proud to ask for it. The more you know. I'm not so sure. I really messed up at the studio today and he got... Ugh, it was... it wasn't good, okay? Gee. Sounds like someone should go after him. Uh. Someone named Husk. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Why don't you go if you're so worried? Because I'm not the one who sent him storming out. That's you fair. It, you drag him back. No, no. Don't force him back. Just make sure he's safe. I pushed too hard earlier, and I only made things worse. Mm. He'll come back when he's ready. I, I appreciate that Charlie's able to see that. I doubt that she's going to feel confident doing anything aggressive like that. I'm going to go write 100 apology letters and a lesson plan for tomorrow about boundaries. 
We love boundaries here. I was giving her a lot of shit just because of the secondhand embarrassment that I was experiencing, but I do really, really appreciate that she's seen that what she's done is wrong and she's taking that not only as an opportunity to educate herself, but also to extend the education to others. So shout outs to Charlie for that because that's very mature of her to be able to do. That is a fish inside of a bowl. Ooh. Ooh, the tentacles. The whole body, jackass. <laughs> Ew. That guy definitely drowned in a shipwreck. I got better options, right, boy? Hey, baby, be a doll and bring me another one. Daddy's out of jokes. Yikes. Oh, he's drugging him. That's fucked up. Yeah, get him, Husk! Get him! Get him! Oh, shit! What the fuck? What are your cards made out of? actual fuck are you doing here? Let go of me! No, I'm taking you back to the hotel. Get off! She said not to force him. Put something in your drink. You don't think I can tell if someone spikes my drink? I do this all the fucking time. You just let people drug you all the time? You think I ask for it? I don't ask for any of this shit! I didn't ask to be this way. I totally thought that honk was IRL. That tripped me out. You to save me. I can handle myself. Really? Because Just because you can try to handle yourself doesn't mean you can. I appreciate that Husk, although outwardly appearing like a drunken dickhead that doesn't give a fuck about anybody else, he still does genuinely care and i feel like that's so important for anthony to experience that he has somebody who just cares about him because they see him suffering and self-destructing and doing this inherently self-harming behavior i'm really looking forward to what blossoms between the two of them seems like i don't know you might need a bartender to talk to a guy oh, so now not the pose give a shit about me you think after how you treated me, I'm gonna open up to you? Please. Maybe I'd treat you better if you were real and not some bullshit version of yourself, always pushing my boundaries. That's fair. Let me tell you, nobody in that hotel cares who you are, how famous, how hot. So you might as well just... He's so far away. It's not an act. It's who I need to be. Aww. This, this is my escape, where I can forget about it all, how much I hate everything how much you hate angel dust i can get high and not have to think about how much it hurts and maybe if i can ruin myself enough in the process if i end up broken i won't be his favorite toy anymore hmm. maybe he'll let me go a part of me, a small part of me wishes that that were true. That if Valentino saw how devastated and broken and quote unquote useless Angel Dust has become due to all of this neglect and torment, that he would let him go. But truthfully, I think that Valentino gets off too much on knowing that he's the reason why he put somebody in that position in the first place. He's serving sadism in the absolute worst and most fucked up way possible. Aww. I was an overlord once, you know. What? And, uh, it was nice to have that power. But when you're dealing in souls while also being a gambler, the stakes are pretty high. And losing a few hands can be more than a little dangerous. So when oh, you're man. Dead, you turn to anything to keep you afloat. You oh, shit. Yourself. So I know what it's like to regret the choices you made. And knowing you can't take it back. They both made shitty deals. So things look bad. Oh, uh, no, I'm going to cry. I'm gonna cry. I'm already crying, but I'm gonna cry. You can't serenade me with them pipes, bro. Can't face 
I like his umbrella. What the hell? You've lost your way. You think your life is wrecked. Well, let me just say you're correct. Damn, bro. Wait, what? Are you trying to tell me that I am ready to be emotionally devastated in more ways than I already am, and you're about to hit me with some comedic relief-ass music? I'm feeling so many things right now. I'm feeling so many things. <laughs> you're a loser, baby. Oh, a shit. Loser, goddamn baby. You're a I love this vibe. You're a loser just like me. Thanks, asshole. You're a screw. <laughs> Damn. Damn. This supposed to make me feel better. There was a time I thought that no one could relate to the gruesome ways in which I'm damaged. This is a fucking jam. Yep. And you think that makes you unique. Get out of here, man. This is honestly one of the most creative and adorable ways that I've seen somebody express that the other is not alone in their suffering. I, <laughs> this is honestly so silly. All of the situations in this episode so far have been pretty fucked up, but just uh, seeing Husk be able to show Angel that his situation is shitty, but he's not alone in experiencing that shittiness in such a way that doesn't make Anthony feel like less than him is a really, really well done. I think this is such a good way to have this relationship start to form. We're both losers, <laughs> Wait, this is so sweet. It's okay to be a coked up dick sucking hoe. Maybe that's fine by me. Aww. They're so cute together. They're so cute together. I love this. Even if this doesn't end up romantic, I'm totally fine with that. Be just because I need Angel Dust, sorry, Anthony, to have a friend he can confide in. And it's just so sweet. I feel like this is something that Anthony really, really, truly needs. It might even one day give him the confidence to be able to figure out a way out of his contract and to get his soul back. I wonder if there is a way. I mean, I kind of doubt it at least there's no way written out in stone unless it's directly in the contract but still so sad this song is a fucking bop though we shout out the losers out here I got an appetite for gambling. yeah dude the way they sing together is so good Yeah. Oh, look how cute they are. Just maybe if we each shit together, things will end up differently. It's time to lose your self loathing. Ah, the harmony. Uh-oh. <laughs> Run! I, <laughs> I don't think there was a better way that they could have snapped us back into storytelling mode versus musical mode. That's... <laughs> They're fucking singing! Like... <laughs> yeah. Shoutouts to that voice actor because that's such a well-delivered line. Oh, the angel in the background in the poster. He got grenade dice? What in the D&D Natural 20 bullshit was that? It's the customized gun for me. He made him dust. Where did you get those from? Where were they? Well, 
Well, that was something I didn't expect to see. Like I said, he's soggy. You know, sex ain't the only thing I'm good at. Oh, the makeup came off on his eye. And it took him like 30 minutes to count it. His eyes are so shit. <laughs> and this is the guy you got to take orders from? Oh, he can't see well, Val? That's interesting to know. That's actually so funny because Valentino is based off a of moth, right? The way that mobs evolved, they prioritized visual sensitivity over spatial acuity. So basically what that means is a moth's ability to identify fine detail is sacrificed so that they can detect movement better and be able to see in dimmer lighting and the fact that they incorporated that into valentino is so clever and silly it's fine i get it Aww. thanks for caring about me Aww. me too charlie Aww. <laughs> the way he carries her like a toddler. See, let's get you to bed. He, he said first, first. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> She's such a little lady. <laughs> oh man. You read my mind. Ah. Uh. Ah. <sighs> Bro, this episode, I'm, my heart, my little heart is so shattered and tattered and fucked. I, I can't. I, I totally feel Charlie though. I just want to bust in there and fuck some bitches up. Man. <gasps> Spindle horse. Man, in the best and most poetic way possible, this episode fucking sucked. It was a really good episode actually, but like the, it hurts so much to watch. It's honestly tragic, like in the most true definition of the word, it's a tragedy. We all just want what's best for Angel, but it's so difficult to be able to do that when he's in the situation that he's in. I really hope that him and Husk's friendship is able to blossom and grow and he's able to find himself more comfortable with the people around him. This episode made me so angry for Angel, dude. Like I'm, I'm furious in Anthony's defense. Defense. He deserves so much fucking better than the bullshit that he's being put through. And you guys were not wrong when you said in the comments of the poison reaction that I was going to be devastated when I saw the context of it. Which, if you haven't seen the reaction to poison, that's the first time I heard that song. I suggest you go watch that. But I I adore the character that Husk is turning out to be. He's he's so supportive, but like in a real way. He's not there to coddle you. He's there to make you act like your true self. And I love that he was able to help Anthony break the facade of angel dust. It's very, very heartwarming to see that that progress is being made. And I, I can't wait to see more truly. Well, that is all the time I have for today's episode. I hope you had a fantastic time hanging out with me because I had a fantastic time hanging out with you. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all the things that YouTubers ask you to do. You've been here before. You know how this works. Have a fantastic day, you freaky fly babies. You deserve to be treated like a human being by anybody and everybody in your life. And if somebody doesn't treat you with the respect that you deserve, walk a flock of fuck that guy. Love you. Bye. Mwah! <laughs>